Hey, how do you know there's a pilot in the room? He'll tell you. You've decided to become a pilot. Here's my top five tips on how to pick a flight school. One, the first place to start is to find out how busy the flight school is and what kind of students they cater to. If they cater to international students, they might not have the availability or flexibility to accommodate your schedule. See how many instructors they have because again, that will determine on how often you can train. Of course, you need to decide how often you want to fly. If you're not going to train aggressively, fly one or two times a week, then a busy flight school might work for you. Here's a pro tip. Find out if you can train with the same instructor, because then you can build a relationship and the instructor knows how quickly you're progressing versus switching instructors every single lesson. You might not also get along with an instructor because everyone has a different teaching style and you might not like how they teach. Therefore, I found that it's easier to stick with one instructor if you don't get along with them, pick another one. Now that becomes limited when there's a small school and there's only one or two flight instructors. Then you might have to pick a different school. So my recommendation is to find a flight instructor that you get along with and you like, you like their teaching style and stick with them. Because in the long term, that will save you time and money from having to switch different flight instructors. Aircraft fleet size can also give you an idea of how big the flight school is. Since a school with five aircraft will make a big difference compared to one with two in the progression of your flight training. So when determining the size of a flight school, first ask yourself how aggressively and often you want to train and then pick accordingly. Two, convenience. Flight training might be the last thing you want to do after a long work week or school week. So picking a flight school close to where you live will make it easier for you to get to your flight lessons. Ground school is also usually taught in the evenings on weekdays. And that will mean less time on the road or stuck in traffic. Pro tip, ask the flight school how close the flight training area is from the airport. Convenience also matters how much time you spend getting from the airplane to your training area. If you have to spend 20 to 30 minutes flying to the training area every single time, that's gonna eat into your lesson and end up costing you more money in the long term. Therefore, it might be worth it to drive the extra little bit to a different airport if it's closer to the flight training area because it could save you $60 or more per flight less. So convenience is determined by you and how motivated you are to get to your flight lessons and then pick a school that suits those needs. Three. One of the most confusing parts about picking a flight school is all the hidden costs. One school might charge you less per flight hour, but they'll have a fuel surcharge fee. Another school might not have the fuel surcharge fee, but they'll charge you higher for the pre-flight ground briefing portion. Some schools charge for everything. It can be very confusing. So the point is to ask all the right questions. Ask what is the dual solar rate? Find out how much the ground school costs. How much does it cost for the pre and post-flight ground briefing? What is the fuel surcharge? Is there a fuel surcharge? Is there a membership fee or any other fees associated with training? Ask as many questions as you can to be the most informed you can be and then pick a flight school that you feel comfortable with. Four. The size of the flight school will also determine how frequent they offer their courses. For example, if they just finished the private pilot ground school and another one doesn't start for three more months, that might not work for you if you want to get started training right away. Bigger schools can have ground schools that run all year long, so you can jump in any time. Another question to ask is how far the flight school can take you in your flight training. Do they offer a commercial pilot license? What about a multi-engine IFR? Not every flight school has a multi-engine aircraft because they cost a lot of money and a lot to operate. And if they don't have the demand or students for that type of airplanes, then you'll probably have to switch schools when you get to that part in your training. Maybe you've always wanted to fly floats and get your float rating. Well, there's even less of those schools around. You might have to do the training in a separate city or even province if there's no large bodies of water around you and no flight school. Once again, the question is how far you want to go in your personal flight training and pick a school according to that. Five. At the end of the day, everything comes down to cost. So any financial help goes a long way. Therefore, it's important to find out if your school is accredited because that will let you apply for loans and bursaries. Here's a pro tip. You cannot get any financial help with your private pilot license or any flight time building. Also, some aviation colleges already want you to have the private pilot license before you're admitted to the flight training program. So that cost will have to come out of your own pocket. So if the school is accredited, you can apply for financial aid towards your commercial pilot's license, your multi-engine IFR rating, and your flight instructor rating. Here's another pro tip. EI, or unemployment, also has financial aid to help get you rehired. 
So if you're laid off, look into that financial option as well. Another option to look into is to contact the flight school and see if they will open a satellite base for you if there's five or more students wanting to get their private pilot's license or any sort of training done at the same time. What that means is if there's no flight training school near where you live, the flight school can put an airplane there with an instructor and train the whole group. Having a large group might make it worth it for the flight school to do that and in the long run that will save all of you money. Or at the very last resort, you can get a group of people together, buy your own aircraft, get all registered on the insurance, hire a flight instructor, and he'll do all of your training. So I do believe that's all I got for you today. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe, and I'll see you next week.